I don't like uh, idle power consumption and stuff and I try to always keep my workshop running as, effic as efficiently as possible uh, with regards to that. However, recently uh, the power consumption for uh, my workshop uh, has started to uh, slowly increase and I'm not entirely sure as to why that would be. Uh, the only thing that's really powered on 24-7 is my server and that thing draws a bit 40 watts give or take so the 100 watts of idle pay consumption we're seeing is really not quite justified so and I've been thinking about what would be causing this and then I had a look at my UPS and if I put my hand on top of that box it's rather warm and if I put my clamp meter on the battery cable uh, you can see well, we're constantly drawing about 200 to 300 milliamps into these batteries. So I'm figuring those batteries are entirely shot because they're using way, way, way too much float charge current and uh, the charger in that you can... Oh, Jesus Christ! I'm sitting on a vacuum cleaner. And with the charger in these uh, UPSs aren't particularly efficient. So, uh, as a solution to that, I'm just going to scrap that UPS system entirely uh, because uh, the power outlet I'm using for the server uh, is already battery backed. It's coupled to my solar system which has an absolutely giant uh, 48 volt battery backup system. So I think it would just uh, take some time to put this little basic UPS, a back UPS 300 in place to back up only the server. I don't need any particular battery backup locally for anything else. And we'll see uh, how much that 100 watts drops uh, when we're going from a 1500 VA line interactive UPS to a 300 VA offline basic UPS. This thing has a, an idle consumption of about four watts or so. And I've now turned off both my computer and the server and we're still drawing 53 watts in standby with an absolutely awful power factor of about 0.5 to boot. Not even 0.5. So, let's rip out the old UPS and see how much of that thing's actually consuming on its own. And I've now turned the UPS output off so uh, the transformer is still connected but none of the loads are powered and we're still drawing almost 30 watts continuously and it spikes up a bit higher when it's cycling the battery charger. So, yep, we've definitely got a very inefficient UPS here. And now I've disconnected the battery from the UPS and that's uh, cut out power consumption in half. So we were seeing a constant 15, 16 watt consumption just in the batteries of the UPS. And here you can see my absolutely stunning uh, bat APC battery pack to telecom battery uh, conversion where I've just uh, cut up two APC 100 amp fuses and one I've stretched between the battery terminals just in a stock APC battery pack and the other one I've just uh, uh, soldered onto a couple of big leads leading into the UPS and it's been working very well for many years and there come the batteries and I did label them 201502 so they've been sitting here for about two years uh, but uh, the actual age of these batteries recharged before the 14th of the 10th 2001 so these batteries are 16 years old. <laughs> 16 years old. And I'm honestly surprised they aren't deformed or cracked or anything. Uh, even though they've been drawing so much current. And they're slightly fat in the middle cell of that one. But really, <laughs> all things considered, these are in excellent shape. But... Uh, I'm going to wager right now that these are going to be about half of the capacity of when I put them in, uh, somewhere around 30 to 40 amp hours. And while doing this I've uh, apparently run out of extension leads, but that's fine because I've got uh, uh, a whole bunch of these uh, crappy extension cord sized EPC UBSs which are ripped the electronics out of uh, because these are lovely to just turn into big hunky chunky uh, extension leads uh, which even have an integrated 10 amp uh, breaker 
and uh, it's super easy to do this conversion. You just re remove all the electronics, and then you're left with these uh, wires, black and white, going from the previously UPS to output, and you just solder these onto the non-UPS output, which is already connected straight up to the mains, and then you get to go. Eight, eight port extension lead, three out of the trash. And there you go, perfect result. Everything going straight into this rail, then on towards this rail. Just going to put this back together and we'll have our free extension cord. Alright, I've pretty much finished ripping everything out which should get ripped out. And I've connected up everything which should be connected up. And uh, without this server powered on, uh, we've now got a standby power consumption of 14 watts, which is... Uh, well, last time what we saw only the UPS and no loads connected before. So let's uh, remember that, 14 watts, and turn the UPS on and watch the server come to life. So it's going to take a moment to boot up. Yeah, <laughs> almost 100 watt during boot before the power saving thingies come to play. I'll give that a minute. Ah, there we go, with everything booted up and ready and running as normal, and we've now got a standby power consumption of 6263 watts. So by removing the giant UPS, uh, we've essentially shaved uh, an entire light bulb, 40 watt light bulb being on 24-7, 365 days a week, uh, off our power bill. And that's not too bad considering that uh, uh, we actually do have uh, let's see, we actually do have a fair amount of power running through this uh, in total. I mean, that is a rather high 24-7 power consumption, actually. I'd like to see this lower, but uh, yeah, it's just not going to happen. I've got way too many standby power supplies. I mean, just 14 watts in standby power supplies on my switch as well. Mm. That's a fair amount of power. So get, getting to 60 watts with a, a rather powerful server running on top of that, I guess you can't complain. As for the aesthetics of this uh, uh, setup, well, I'm not going for good looks. I'll just shove the UPS in there somewhere and we've just got a big hole where everything else used to be. Uh, since this workshop is under the rule of the Freedom of Cables to Move Act of uh, 2010, uh, I'm not going to tie any of this up, because that would just lead me to headaches in the future. And uh, in there you can see the freshly converted EPC UPS uh, power cord uh, just lying around behind the computers and distributing power as it's supposed to. So that's about it. Well, let's get to doing a performance check on those poor guys. All right, now they wired everything up rather haphazardly to my constant current load, which is ready on standby. Fans working, and we've got the software running here. So let's just program it up for. 10 amps on both channels. I terminate at 10.8 volts. Good. Save that. Channel 2. 10 amps. Save that. And we will start the test. Uh, impeders wise, they don't seem to be doing too poorly actually. Barely dropping between below 12.5, I don't know. They're dropping down 12.47. Yeah, these are gonna drop to 12.4 before they settle down, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. These are not in the best of shape, but uh, we're gonna get some stats on them in due time. Ah, we get to witness my beautiful analog fan controller stirring to life. Well, that took a while to finish. I've been blessed with the noise of loud server fans now for uh, quite approximately six hours with the 
uh, battery of a battery is actually reaching 59 amp hours, which uh, honestly surprised me. The other one lived up pretty much to my, to my expectations at 37.3. Uh, and I've drawn out the discharge curve for that, and yeah, it, it's actually looking pretty good. Nothing uh, absolutely horrible about that discharge curve. It's, it looks just like you'd want to see in a healthy 12 volt battery, uh, save for the fact that it's sitting at around 12 volts uh, at uh, 10 amps, which is way too low a voltage for a battery of this uh, size. But uh, all in all, these batteries are not as bad as I actually thought they'd be, uh, even though they'd gotten quite significantly unbalanced over time. In 2015, they were both 74 amp hours. But these are now done for. They're never going to get charged again because they're going to the scrapyard. Because while they might work, uh, that size battery does not justify 37 amp hours. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio.